So many people have been saying Justin Fields is not the guy for the Chicago Bears, but his teammates have come out and said the complete opposite. Yesterday it was DJ Moore, today it was Jalen Johnson. These guys are coming out in support of Justin Fields. And of course, today we're going to talk about why I think Justin Fields should be the quarterback of the future for the Bears. Now, I'm not 100% sure if he will be. I'm not 100% sure what Ryan Poles and the Chicago Bears will ultimately do. But there's so many moments on tape where you look at Justin Fields and you say, this guy does not get the help. Rather, it's the coaching staff that runs a terrible offensive scheme. Rather, it's an offensive lineman getting beat or whatever it may be. A guy misses a block here or there. To me, there's definitely moments of Justin Fields' tape. You know, the first play of the game here, the Bears are going to run DJ Moore deep. And DJ Moore is going to get a step on the cornerback at the bottom of your screen. And Justin Fields reads this. He reads the post safety, understands that this guy's playing the run first, and he's not going to be able to get over the top. So he's going to take his shot to DJ Moore here. But as you guys see, the ball is going to sail to the right, and it's just not far enough. The decision here to throw to Moore made sense. Unfortunately for Fields, this was the first play of the game, and Darnell Wright's actually going to slip as he's trying to block the defensive end on this one. You're going to see he's going to lose his footing. He's going to end up falling, and Justin Fields is going to take the hit as he throws the football. He throws it off his back foot, and it's just an incomplete pass because of that. There's moments like this all throughout Justin Fields' tape last night, and today we're going to look at a number of examples. Let's get right into it. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get into this next play here. You got a second and two, four minutes left in the first quarter, and you have a pretty nicely designed play. Uh, this one's definitely one of those plays you design, and you know that, hey, coming into this game, we're going to run this play at some point early on in the game. We're going to try to design a touchdown. And this one should have been a touchdown. Second and two, this is the difference between winning and losing. This play right here is beautiful. And even the pass by Justin Fields. I mean, it's such a nice pass. And we're talking about a pass 45 yards downfield. And the tight end just straight up drops it. You can't have this as an NFL starting tight end. So there's a couple different elements within this play. So you can get a play action, roll out. The tight end here is going to stay, and he's going to actually block Miles Garrett. You got the motion. You have another receiver here just running a crossing pattern. And that receiver is actually going to draw in the post safety. This is cover one. So the safety here does have the responsibility of playing deep, but he's going to see the wide receiver, and he's going to take that away. And Tanyan's going to slip out over towards the left, and he's going to turn this back up and hit this deep. And the design of the play is actually pretty damn good. The execution up front, everybody does a pretty solid job. You see DJ Moore draws in the post safety. And you see the tight end here slipping past the linebacker. Just kind of running right by him. And Justin Fields has a bunch of guys around him. He's about to take a big hit. He stops himself and he throws the ball deep downfield. And the tight end should be able to catch this pass. I mean, this is a touchdown right here. And I don't know how the tight end doesn't catch this pass. I mean, the, the, the throw does not get better than this. This is part of why I think Justin Fields cannot get blamed 100% for this loss here against the Cleveland Browns. To me, the Browns are a really, really good defense. They're one of the best defenses in the NFL. And you can't drop these passes right here. That's kind of what happened over the course of this game. And there's other plays we're going to get into. Let's go ahead and get into the next play. So you got DJ Moore here at the top of your screen. He's going to do a really nice job running his route. And the quarterback's going to hit him on a back shoulder pass. Beautiful ball placement here by Justin Fields. Uh, to me, when I watch Fields, these are the type of passes where I feel like, hey, this guy definitely has what it takes to be an NFL starting caliber quarterback. It's because of passes like this. Now, he obviously is going to hit the wide receiver on a back shoulder pass as opposed to putting it out in front of him. I'm not 100% sure why it was designed that way as opposed to throwing it deep. And you guys can look at this play here and I'll slow it down. Uh, would it have made more sense for Fields to put this ball over the top? Would it have made sense to put the ball further out here where the wide receiver could possibly catch it in stride? It's definitely possible. He has a step on the cornerback. But again, it could be something with the route concept where it's supposed to be thrown to the sideline and it's supposed to be a back shoulder. Either way, great ball placement great adjustment by the wide receiver and just a really really nicely executed play this was third and two this was right after the big drop by the tight end uh, on second and two so this was a moment that i felt like the chicago bears really needed to be able to pick up chunk yards 27 yards let's get into the next snap so one of the things that the cleveland browns did a lot to justin fields is they blitzed him 
On this one here, they're going to bring six guys, and they're going to end up pressuring the quarterback. And Justin Fields is basically going to throw the ball away. I want to talk about this play a little bit. As a running back who is playing on passing situations, you got to be able to pick up the blitz. You're in a one-on-one -on -one here with the blitzing safety. You got to take him on, and you got to stop him. This is instant pressure on the quarterback because the running back's not able to stop the blitzing safety. You have to be able to take this guy on and stop him. And that may not be a safety. It may actually be one of their linebackers. Uh, but you got to be able to stop this guy in his tracks. This is the difference between being able to complete a pass and not being able to complete a pass. Keep in mind, this is the very next play after that big DJ Moore catch on the sideline. And I wanted to point this play out because we now have three plays, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back plays, where they're all deep as developing plays this is part of why i question the coaching a little bit although you got instant pressure here you really only have one true route downfield this is really just the influence route to clear it out you got the receiver running an in-breaking route but keep in mind the route does not hit until the wide receiver gets about 20 yards downfield to me i would love to see justin fields just be able to throw a seven yard slant you know or run the dragon concept or run some, you know, run a skinny post or, or an outbreaking route where Fields is able to time it and he's able to pick up some, some cheap yards, right? I hate the fact that you're going to run routes, you know, 20, 25 yards downfield. Uh, sometimes you should be able to just kind of take the short yards, but it seems like the coaching staff is trying to just continuously take chunk plays and that doesn't always work out. Alrighty guys, check this play out here. You got a third and eight and Justin Fields going to end up getting sacked. Now, I think Justin Fields has massive upside. I think he could still be a really, really good quarterback. But there are some moments where even though Fields gets sacked, it's not necessarily on the offensive line. And this is a great example of that. Justin Fields is going to take a three-step drop here. He's going to hold on to the ball too long, and he's going to end up getting stripped. These are the moments that Fields has to clean up in his game. If he wants to be a long-term quarterback in the NFL that has success, these are the moments that matter. you got to be able to throw these, these passes right here. You got to get the ball out. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what he was looking at. And to me, this is one of those moments you got to throw the ball. Three-step drop. Throw the ball right now. The wide receiver here has already hit his break to the outside. You time this and you put it to the outside. And you're going to get a completion and the first down. And he almost does it. right? He clutches the ball. He's looking to possibly throw it. And he gets off of that. And he comes back to the underneath route. And he ends up not taking that. He ends up just taking the sack. Uh, these are the moments that Justin Fields has to clean up. If we're going to criticize the O-line, if we're going to criticize the coaching, we also got to criticize Justin Fields on plays like this, right? This one, he has to be able to get the ball out, complete the pass. Let's go ahead and get to the next snap. All right, you guys, check this play out. You got a third and five. The Bears obviously had some struggles being able to score a touchdown on this drive. Uh, I believe the interception got them down to like the one or two yard line. You got to do a, a better job being able to punch it in, but... The Bears do score. They do get the touchdown. Justin Fields does a phenomenal job on this play. Uh, you get instant pressure by the left tackle who's going up against Miles Garrett. Really nice job by Garrett. Probably the best defensive end in the NFL. And Fields does a great job being able to break the sack. I mean, that right there is a special, special thing in itself for Justin Fields. He extends the play. He's going to keep his eyes downfield. The tight end does a great job breaking late, seeing that Fields is kind of rolling out of the pocket. And of course, Fields does a really, really nice job with the pass. It's outside the reach of the linebacker's hands. And you're going to get a five-yard touchdown right there. And these are some of the moments that make Justin Fields a really, really good quarterback. It's the ability to extend, the ability to make plays. Uh, to me, this is part of what makes Justin Fields a really, really good quarterback. And it's a part of what could allow Justin Fields to become a top-tier quarterback in the NFL. You guys, check this play out here. First and 10, I want you guys to look at the wide receivers and tell me what type of routes are open on this one or what type of route concept is kind of being run on this one. I see no wide receiver that's even remotely close to being open. I don't see any sort of route concept or design. All I see is three guys just running 15, 20 yards deep and the quarterback ultimately checks the ball off. To me, that doesn't really make sense. It's kind of a bad play by the offensive coach. Let's go ahead and get to the next snap. Check this one out. The Bears are going to run a dagger concept. And Fields is going to deliver a really nice pass to DJ Moore on this one. Uh, this one pops for 20 yards. A beautiful pass anticipation between three defenders. I mean, it does not get better than this one here. You guys can see it from the end zone angle. Great job by Fields to be able to recognize, read, 
And just look at the pass, man. Right over the top of number 44. In front of the cornerback and safety. Really, really nice pass right there by Fields. Let's get into the next snap. All right, you guys. So you're going to get a third and 14. The Bears are going to come out with four wide receivers. Which means there's not going to be a whole lot of help for Braxton Jones. There's not going to be a whole lot of help on the inside. And this is kind of what happens sometimes when you aren't able to help Braxton Jones. I mean, Braxton Jones has looked good at times. This season, he struggled a little bit. Uh, he's had plays like this. And I understand this is Miles Garrett, so this may not be a great example to show. Uh, but Miles Garrett did this to Braxton Jones a couple of times in which Jones did not have help. To me, you can't have that. Right? You got to be able to anchor down. You got to be able to stop this guy and give your quarterback the opportunity to go through his reads. Uh, you can see that basically Miles Garrett blows this entire play up. Even on the inside, you know, you can't really do much when there's pressure coming off the edge and the quarterback needs to step up. Uh, this one right here was third and 14 and basically it's the incomplete pass because of that pressure off the edge. Check this play out. Fields has to do a better job on this one. Uh, you're going to get a screen pass called to the top of your screen and for some reason he just throws the ball away. I'm not 100% sure what happens on this one. I'm not sure if Fields just wasn't able to kind of see over the top, but you look at this play here and how it develops up top. If Justin Fields is able to get the ball to the running back here, you're going to see that the linebacker here is going to get picked off. I mean, there's no one out here at all. Like, this could possibly be a touchdown depending on if these two guys ultimately get blocked. You have the numbers. So I'm not sure exactly what happens on this one, but Fields does throw the ball away. That's unfortunate. Could have been a big play. That one's on Fields for sure. Let's get into the next snap. First and 10, Justin Fields is going to throw the pass, and it's going to be a bad pass. Now, uh, you can't blame Justin Fields for this one. If you guys watch the left tackle, Braxton Jones, he's going to get crushed by Miles Garrett. Uh, and I know, again, it's Miles Garrett, I understand, but you got to do a better job. I mean, it's a simple three-step drop. Quarterback's going to get hit, and you'll see the ball does hit the tight end, but it's way behind him. You know, what do you expect Komet to do if the pass is behind him? And this is one of the reasons why I do think at this point that Chicago Bears do have to consider getting help at that left tackle position. I know a lot of people are going to say the Bears should possibly just take a quarterback and reset the clock. I wouldn't be upset if the Chicago Bears decided to trade the number one pick away and just reload, right, on, on assets. Last season, they got DJ Moore. Uh, this season, they can easily get another wide receiver or a left tackle, possibly, right? Either trading with the team for the current left tackle they may have or even drafting one of the guys. You got the Penn State tackle. You got the Notre Dame tackle. Georgia has a fantastic tackle as well. Uh, there's three really, really good tackles. And uh, at this point, I think it would help Justin Fields if he had the protection. I know we're not doing the offensive line breakdown specifically today. We're really just looking at Fields and the scheme. Uh, you know, Darnell Wright also went up against Miles Garrett a number of times, and he doesn't get beat the same way Braxton Jones does. And Jones should not be getting beat the way he does right now. And I'm not even 100% out on Jones. I still think he can develop into something. But Ryan Poles has to be 100% sure that Jones has the upside to develop. You know, one of the things that will allow Jones to develop is is where he's at with his strength. And that's not something that you or I could could ever figure out. Right, we don't know if this guy can continue to get stronger or if he's already at the point where he's not going to get that much stronger as we go forward. I don't know. But this play right here, you can't have it. Right, That's just a bad play. Got to be able to anchor down. Let's get into the next snap. The score at the moment is 16-7. to This was the first play of the fourth quarter. A lot of people believe this was the play that lost the Chicago Bears the game. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't even disagree with that. I think this was one of the key moments that ultimately lost the Bears the game. In my opinion, Darnell Mooney just isn't it. I mean, it's just, it, he just, you know, this is such a simple thing to do as a wide receiver. And I don't know how you're not able to do this. Like number 29 here is playing the run. And all Mooney has to do is just give more effort. Hit this guy. Straight up hit his ass. And he doesn't. He barely touches him. And the guy jumps out in front and he tries to trip up Justin Fields and he gets lucky. He hits the feet of Fields and Fields trips and he falls. There's nothing Justin Fields could have done on this one differently. Uh, you can see DJ Moore running his route is actually going to draw the cornerback uh, right here. Who's going to ultimately run with Moore. He's going to let Fields go, which is the right thing to do. But to me, Mooney has to make the block on the other defender because this one right here ended up a loss of yards, about half a yard. 
But basically, it was turnover on downs. And the Cleveland Browns got a short field and they ultimately got a field goal out of their next drive. So one of the things that teams have been doing against fields is they'll spy a guy. And as soon as he has the opportunity, he'll jump one of these gaps and he'll go and he'll go after the quarterback. Uh, One of the things from a scheme perspective that I think the Bears kind of struggle with is running better route concepts and not always necessarily just trying to go deep. Uh, On this one, you can see they're trying to run another deep concept where the wide receiver at the top is basically going to run a deep dig route. And with that, when you're running these deep dig routes, you need time. So teams are either going to just straight up blitz the quarterback or they'll have a guy spy and then kind of delay blitz a little bit. Like on this one, look at all the guys that are coming after fields. That's just not winning football, in my opinion. You got to do a better job if you're a play caller. One of your responsibilities as a play caller is to call plays and call plays that work. In this instance, these are not winning plays. These are not plays that are going to help you be able to win games. Uh, this is just doing a, a massive disservice to Justin Fields at this point. Couple plays left here. So Fields is going to end up getting sacked on this one, as you guys are going to see. Uh, they're going to bring a blitz off the edge, and you'll see that the running back's not going to be able to pick it up. Uh, you got to do a better job if you're the running back here, although that may be the fullback. You got to do a better job, right? You're going to see the linebacker's going to come right off the edge, number six here. And it's just a poor effort. And I, again, I understand the Browns blitzed the shit out of Justin Fields. And with that, he just didn't have the time to get the ball out. Uh, this one right here lost a number of yards. And then you got this next one here. Uh, this one was with 32 seconds left. Fields is going to deliver a really, really nice pass to the wide receiver who's running what looks like a circus route at the top. Hits the receiver right in the hands and he's going to drop it. Uh, you got to catch these. Uh, I understand that Fields' receivers are on the younger side. Some of these guys are a little inexperienced. Uh, And they're not that talented. I'll be the first to tell you guys. I don't think the Bears wide receivers are very talented. DJ Moore is a great wide receiver. Uh, But Tyler Scott is a rookie. You got guys like Darnell Mooney, who I think should be like wide receiver five, who basically starts for the Bears. I think Cole Komet's a pretty good tight end. But even the running backs aren't 100% set in stone. I'm not a fan of Foreman. I think he lacks explosiveness. I know Roshan Johnson could probably be the future, but... You know, the Bears really haven't unlocked him either, right? They haven't been u- using him enough. So to me, the Bears on the offensive side, they need to add talent. They need to add weapons, right? They need to add playmakers to be able to help Justin Fields. At the moment, they don't have that. But the hope is as they go into this offseason, they'll be able to actually get Justin Fields help. They'll be able to add talent and get better. And I hope they roll forward with Justin Fields. I, I really do. And I, I don't know if that's going to actually happen. Uh, And I know this video was so much different than the regular videos that I make on this channel where I only talk about O-line and D-line. But, you know, I do I do follow the Chicago Bears. I watch every single one of their games. It's one of the teams that I actually enjoy watching. Uh, And Justin Fields is a quarterback that I actually genuinely genuinely like. Right. And to me, I just feel like the Bears have to help out Justin Fields. They got to get a little bit more talent for him Uh, in the hopes that going into next season, they can actually compete for a playoff spot for the Super Bowl because this team is not a bad roster. They've done a great job on the offensive line. They just got to shore up the left tackle spot. They've done a phenomenal job bringing in Montez Sweat. Those are the type of trades that allow you to win Super Bowls. Is bringing in low-risk type of players that end up way outperforming their contract. I think Montez Sweat will outperform his contract. And there's just other talented pieces on this team. Guys like Jalen Johnson. Jack Sanborn's a linebacker that I really, really like. Gervon Dexter has come on strong. And of course, you got some good offensive pieces. Just got to put it together. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.